Hey, my name is Joe. Welcome to Shepherd's Workbench. All right, so this is what we're going to be building today. Um, I got my cut list down here. Um, so we're going to make this out of two three-quarter inch sheets of MDF. Um, down here, we're going to have a um, little spot for uh, shoes and things like that um, with a little bench top seat. Um, and then up top here, we're going to have um, a spot for like, like scarves, hats, gloves, things like that with a hook for coats and backpacks and whatnot. So let's get into the build today. So we're gonna start here by breaking down our rough plywood. I got all of my sheets down. Having one of these little grippers for full panels is amazing because those panels are heavy. Um, so I started by marking out all of my lines, making sure that they were um, according to the plans that I had. I got my little notebook there with all my measurements just to make sure I got it all right. Um, because it was just so big and heavy, I broke it down with my track saw um, and then went to the table saw afterwards to finish up the cuts. So these are all going to be cut oversized. Make sure you're wearing a respirator when you're cutting this stuff. It can be, especially if it's not labeled formaldehyde free, it can have a lot of chemicals in it, especially when it's um, being cut like that and dust is just going in the air. So now that we got all of our pieces cut, um, it's time to start assembling everything. So now that we got all our pieces cut, it's time to start um, cutting down all of the, and refining all of our cuts. So I did that all on my cross cut sled, just cutting all of the dividers in the pieces to make sure we had everything. So it turns out, I'm gonna need a new cross cut sled. None of my edges were square. <laughs> uh, they weren't straight lines. So what I did is instead of doing 14 inches across, um, I did that 13 and 3 quarters and ripped it on my fence. So in that way, at least these two sides are parallel. So I'm going to put all of my dividers in, mark out where those locations are, and then drill out pilot holes and countersink from the bottom um, just to glue and screw them all together. So now that we got both of our cabinets built, it's time to focus on the top. So I had this piece of pine that was left over from the previous owner in our garage. It was um, used as just a shelf, but I figured it'd be good to use as a part of this house project. So I took all of the pieces to my planer and jointer um, just to mill them up to get all of that scale and dust and crap that was all over it um, and make sure it looked nice and was prepared for stain. But once I got it all together, I realized it just wasn't wide enough. So I found this other piece that was also in the garage um, and milled that up. And it looked like it was some old growth pine. 
Um, so we are going to use that as a middle stripe as kind of an accent piece to it. So I took my biscuit joiner, marking out all of my lines for my biscuits, put them all in, uh, and glued the whole thing up. All right, we're all glued up. Um, I got some call boards on here. It started to kind of potato chip on me. But um, we'll leave it in the clamps overnight, and uh, we'll see where we're at in the morning. Um, I may get to start it on that backer board. Um, what I realize I'm going to do is I'm going to um, attach the top piece um, and leave the bottom floating. Um, I realize they're super heavy. Um, so trying to carry them in with uh, while they're attached would probably snap that three quarter MDF. So uh, I'm going to attach the top and then leave the bottom separate and I'll finish that up later. So we'll see where we're at in the morning on this one. Once I got it all glued up, I kind of just took off the harsh edges with my belt sander and orbital sander um, and then took it to the table saw to cut it down to size. Um, also ripping it by taking equal parts off both sides, making sure that my sanded side was down on the face because that was the flattest part of the board. Um, and I wanted to make sure that was the edge that I referenced. Then I took it over to a, my router and used a quarter inch roundover bit just for all of the edges that were gonna be on top that were gonna be touched so they weren't any sharp corners and then refined those curves with my sanding block. So then we can use stain. Now I know what you're thinking. Joe, no self-respecting woodworker uses stain. But here's the thought process. My wife, when she said she wanted the belt top, she wanted it to be dark. So I thought, oh, walnut? No, too expensive. Ooh, I could go get some. Yeah, I'm still a cheapskate. Well, stain it is. And this is how it turned out. It was pretty great. So then we can cut our back piece. This was, again, a huge piece of MDF, and it was really heavy. So I first wanted to break it down into its final sizes with my track saw. Um, and then to put the little lines in it, I took it over to my table saw and just adjusted my fence, cut it about an eighth of an inch deep, then flipped the board over and did the same pass on the other side until I got all of my ridges. Once all the ridges were cut, I, the first initial part of that cut got really messed up. So I wanted to fill in all of the cuts behind the shelving boxes. And I did that with this dry dex spackling. Um, it goes on pink and it dries white, um, which, so it just lets you know when it's dry. Once it's dry, to sand it all smooth. Um, so that I could prep the whole surface for paint. Once I had all those holes filled, I took the top shelf and glued and screwed it to the top and then filled in all of the screw holes with the spackling. And I found some leveling feet to put in on the bottom. Um, I didn't have the actual sockets for the leveling feet, so I found some nuts that fit and I drilled out the hole for them and then chiseled out a little mortise for that nut to sit in and then just hammered it home. Then I screwed in the holes from the bottom to be able to mount the top to the bottom cabinet. And it was time for paint. I used this Rust-Oleum chalk paint in Serenity Blue. Um, so I did that for the both cabinets and the backer piece. And while that was drying, I took the time to took some water-based polyurethane to the top. I ended up doing two coats, sanding with 220 in between. Now, my wife wanted a little contrast, so I had this chalk, white chalk paint that I did for the inside of all of the cabinets. And then the project was done. Um, my wife really loved it. It took a little longer than my other projects, but if you want to see more projects coming up, like and subscribe to this video on my channel. 
Um, and we'll see you back here next time.